welcome to the Cardiff and Met Hockey Club Junior Academy YouTube page. Today is the first video in a series of skill breakdowns. My name is Ian Davis and today's skill is going to be around the Indian dribble. Uh, there should be hopefully something for everyone in this video from those who are just starting out and some, um, some activities and some challenges later on in the video with the different uh, uh, ways we can try and practice the Indian dribble. Um, what you'll need for this video, um, and if you're watching this during COVID-19 while it's being filmed, um, you can do this in the house. Um, we were fortunately um, on a little bit of turf in the car park here. Um, but what you'll need, you need your stick, you need a ball, you need a little bit of area. Um, we later on when we highlight some of the activities um, you'll need um, some pieces of equipment that might represent cones so be creative you can use books and uh, we're going to be using shoes later to try and dribble around and imagine we're defenders uh, with the remainder of the video um, there'll be four parts to it firstly we'll um, introduce what the Indian dribble is um, second of all uh, a way to know if we're doing it correctly Third, uh, we'll focus on our cheat sheet or the technical points of how to complete it. And then number four, uh, we'll have some activities for you to practice um, your Indian dribble um, and get it better. Uh, a final point um, to make, if you could, before we get into the video, um, if you could like, comment, subscribe and share um, this content um, or any of your attempts to try and complete uh, some of the activities. It would be great to see um, your attempts at trying to do this Indian dribble. So to begin, what is the Indian dribble? Uh, the purpose of the Indian dribble is to keep control of the ball um, and to get us ready for completing the next action. Uh, so the following clips of some international play um, will describe and show this a little bit further. So our first clip um, is the Olympic final with Great Britain versus Netherlands. Um, Nicola White in possession of the ball where my cursor is uh, and she's about to be um, challenged by Dutch defenders. So she's trying to get her eyes up to look at play but now she's just manipulating the ball to keep control of the ball to avoid the defender and then being able to put it in a place to make the next pass. We see the same here, we see a manipulation of the ball back, ready for a next option. This clip shows a really good example of a player being able to control the ball ready for a next action. So Matt Swan here decides to move the ball back, ready to go play. A backward pass. Instead of having to move his feet all the way around the ball to play the pass, simply drags the ball back and able to play a next pass. Another good example here of an uh, Australian forward um, using the Indian dribble to um, and his body to protect the ball. So as he's encroaching the circle, he's manipulating the ball, getting the ball into a place to find a teammate and get the shot away from goal there. So as we can see again, manipulate over the top of the ball to keep it in a position that the defenders can't access, and then in a place where he can find the pass for a shot. A good example here around Indian dribble and moving feet. Uh, so the, the Belgian forward gets the ball here, can't find a passing option, decides to keep moving his feet to try something new, keeps moving his feet with the ball, keeps moving the ball, and then gets closer to the goalkeeper. Okay, so now we've seen um, how to do the skill on the international level. Uh, we need to work out if, how, how we can do the skill correctly um, before we do any of the technical points. So um, what you'll need, you need your stick and your ball. Um, you'll need something to be able to draw a line with. I'm using some um, red string here. Um, you can use a towel, um, any skipping rope, or you can just draw a line um, on the floor. Uh, depending on if you don't want to ruin your, your parents' carpet or carpet in your house. Um, the whole reason for this is we, when we're doing the Indian dribble, we've got to, in our heads, think about where we're dribbling the ball. Um, so in, in this example here, we're going to give um, sort of four ways we can work out if we're doing it correctly or not. Um, so the first way and the way we do it correctly is that I'd imagine I'm going to carry the ball on a straight line, right to left, and back again. Okay, so I know if I've done it correctly, if I'm imagining I'm taking the ball back and forth here along the string, line there. should be able to see the logo nice and flat and full there. And then as we bring the ball back, should be able to see it there. One way we know we're not doing it correctly is if I'm imagining I'm trying to go back and forth with the ball, but the ball ends up going across or over the line here. Okay? Same again, if I'm going to control it and it goes too far back here. 
when the ball goes too close to us. Okay, we might turn the stick over, but as we're dragging it back, we see how the stick and the logo is not fully behind the ball. It's on this angle, so as I'm pulling back, it might come into my feet there. If it goes too close to our feet, we won't be able to see a pass or get our eyes up. Okay, on the flip side of that, so that's, that's the one way, and we know if we're not doing it correctly because the ball has gone across the line. Uh, the other way would be if the ball goes too far away from your body, so as you're dribbling, the ball goes too far away from your body, okay, and as you're turning over, the ball goes over there. If the stick goes too far underneath the ball, okay, and we can see we can't see the logo nice and fully, so as I'm dragging back, the ball's going to go too far away and we're going to lose possession. The final way um, where the Indian dribble might not work, so we've done it successfully, the ball goes too close to us, the ball goes far away from us, the final way is that we just lose control of the ball altogether. Okay, so as I dribble, as I'm trying to pull back, I leave the ball behind or I miss it. Um, so typically that is because I haven't got my stick around the ball at all. Okay, so we haven't got the ball either in a closed position, directly behind or underneath. We've just dragged it and then I've just gone back and I missed it and the stick's gone too far without the ball. Okay, so now we've worked out if we're doing the Indian dribble correctly and we can start thinking about our cheat sheet or the, the techniques um, that we're going to use, the technical pointers. Um, so first thing we'll talk about and really important around all hockey skills is the grip. Um, so we need a basic grip for this and um, with the basic grip we're looking to have the V with our first finger and thumb going down the back of the stick with just a bit of an angle there. Okay, so an easy way to work this out is to place your stick on the floor okay, and just pick up with the left hand and we should be in this position here. Okay, so we can get the stick out and we're seeing the knuckles rather than the back of the hand because when we turn the stick over to do the Indian dribble the wrist is nice and nice and relaxed here as we turn the ball over and we turn the stick over. If I'm going to go with a, um, a hitting grip or a shake hands grip here where the V is going down the blade um, when I'm turning the stick over you see how the stick and the wrist is a little bit, a little bit um, awkward and a bit difficult to turn the ball over. So we try and get this grip um, here. So the way to work that out is seeing knuckles rather than seeing back of the hand. But if someone's watching you, parent, uh, friend or in the mirror, um, you should be able to see knuckles here. Um, about a point I forgot to mention with the normal, gri uh, the normal grip is that the right hand stays really loose. If we keep our right hand really tight on the stick, my shoulder is going to turn, my eyes go down and I can't see. So the left hand should be able to dominate and a good practice for those of you starting out. Can you use just one hand? Okay, so that's the first thing um, important with the grip there. Second thing is the stick and ball contact. So ideally with the Indian dribble, as we've, um, as we've highlighted at the start, um, the purpose is to keep control and set us up for the next action. Um, so if um, the stick and the ball is coming away, so I move the stick off, yeah, it gives opportunity for someone to come in and make a tackle, or I might not be able to, if I've got my stick off, I might not be able to get it into a place to be able to then go and push the ball, okay, or go and do an elimination skill. Um, so we need to make sure that the stick stays in contact with the ball as much as possible here. Okay. Um, third thing then is that the um, we've talked about the stick making contact with the ball. Um, not always with the Indian dribble we have to go over the top of the ball. And by over the top of the ball I mean the stick going over the top. So imagine a clock and it's going anti-clockwise. Sometimes, um, and we'll see the video in a moment uh, from Sophie Bray, um, that we can go underneath the ball here to dribble. Okay, so we can then go and maybe go into a little lift, um, which will be a future video, so stay tuned and subscribe. So, um, with this, the grip kind of changes if we're going to go underneath the ball and we're going to go in a clockwise fashion around the ball, um, because if we're going to stay with the grip here with the left hand, we're going to do something um, really difficult and awkward. Um, so, the right hand is the one that dominates um, when we're going to go underneath the ball. So the right hand can stay on and I could imagine my right hand could do the action here. Okay, that would be the practice there. So the left hand would just twist a little bit so I can go and lift. Okay, and we're getting into that frying pan grip, that backhand grip. Okay, and we can go underneath, underneath the ball here. Okay, so those are the first three points um, with the stick and our grip and the ball. Um, Next point is our body position. Um, so in, in a match where we're doing this, as we mentioned, we, we end in dribble to keep control of the ball and we need to keep control of the ball because we might have defenders um, around us trying to steal the ball from us. Um, so if, if I'm going to be looking at the ground and my, knee, and my legs are really straight here, so if my legs are really straight, okay, I'm not going to be able to see anything around me. So I need to make sure that when I'm dribbling, I bend at my hips and I can get my vision up. So I should be able to see 
the stick and the ball and see lot in and around me here. Okay, so we need to have our grip, we bend our hips and I should be able to still see both here, I can dribble and see all of you on camera there. Final point then would be um, a footwork element. So this is point number five on our footwork. Um, so with our footwork we can think about moving our body weight and our, our, all our weight into one foot when we're going over. So we can think about going over here and then back. You know, we can maybe lift our feet off the floor to get our bit of rhythm. Okay. What we can also start thinking about and what makes it really difficult for defenders is being um, the word asymmetrical. So we, we are doing opposite um, bits with our opposite things with our body. So if I move the ball left I can try and put my body weight on this foot try and put my body weight on that foot, then try and go asymmetrically. So while the defender's worrying about the ball, my body weight's over here, so then I might be able to dribble and use one of my elimination skills or a drag or a pull of the ball. So there are our five things. First is our grip, basic grip here. Second, keeping stick and ball contact as we go on. Three is that we can take the path under the ball or over the top of the ball, so going anti-clockwise or going clockwise. Number four is our um, body shape or how we bend our hips so we can see um, and have that split vision and then number five is about our body weight and our footwork so we're not just planted um, really static on the floor but we can be quite rhythmical with our stick and ball movement now and our Indian dribble. Activity number one um, is a simple moving the ball back and forth similar to um, our analysis or our, the, way we, the way we work out if we're doing the skill correctly. Um, so we're using shoes here instead of cones. Um, the whole purpose is to move the ball back and forth, back and forth there. Um, so a quick demo, we're going to move the ball back and forth, try and stop the ball before you get to the shoe. Maybe we can imagine this is um, a defender's stick, um, so we, we try and not go and crash into the shoe um, as a stick block or a stick foul. There. Uh, the more advanced version, you might want to move the shoes a little bit further away, so the, the manipulation and the moving of the ball is far bigger. So now we now we can move the ball and we can bring in our footwork here. You know, we can think about doing the asymmetrical feet there, and we can move opposite sides with our body weight here. Okay. All the while trying to remember, maybe try and keep our vision up. If you can get someone to um, start showing different colours, things like that, that might help keep that split vision as we're going rather than just stay focused on the ball there. Activity number two, uh, similar setup uh, to what we had previously with activity number one, um, but instead now we're going to try and focus on a figure of eight action around our two shoes um, or cones or books or cups if you're going to use them at home. Uh, so what we're going to try and attempt to do, we'll start outside the shoe, we're going to move the ball around, and we're going to try and keep that stick on ball contact, and we're going to move around here. We might want to go the other way, keeping that stick on ball contact. Ooh. Unlike what I just did there. Um, ways we can develop this further and um, we can focus on trying to do the, um, the manipulation of the ball underneath the ball, um, similar to what we showed with Sophie Bray in that example earlier. So we can move, we can think about moving the ball underneath to go around and underneath here to move the ball. Oh, go underneath, dribble around there. Activity number three, uh, very similar to the figure of eight that we've done in activity number two, um, but as you can see now we've added an extra object, an extra shoe in here. Um, so what we're gonna do now is still continue our figure of eight kind of actions, but moving in and around the different, um, the different shoes here. So as an example, I may start with a straight movement here, okay, and then I'm going to move around the shoe. Tough on the dry turf here. So I might move around, I'm going to move around this one, and then back there. I move around, and I guess it's up for you all to just decide on what kind of path you want to take around, around the shoes here. Yeah, imagine what the stick and ball path you want to do is first and then you can work out if you're doing the skill correctly. Um, ways to develop this further if you'd like to, um, if you've got someone who can um, watch and challenge you with this, is um, to call out the different um, colours of the shoes here. 
Um, so if you've got a different colour book or uh, maybe piles of socks or shin pads etc, um, you can get someone to call a different colour. So as I'm manipulating the ball, if someone called grey, yeah, my next movement is going to be around the grey and then if it's black, so as I'm dribbling someone may call out uh, these different ones. So if it was orange and then I get grey, I might move around to grey and then it might be black. Okay, so it's just a way uh, for someone maybe to challenge you in your, in your movement patterns and you've got to try and react to that. Activity number four. This activity was created by Dan Cheeseman. Uh, you can find uh, the, the original link to it on his Twitter that will be in the description below. Uh, the whole purpose of the activity is to dribble along to the beat. So pick your favourite song, um, try and dribble along to it, um, along to the beat or to the lyrics. Um, once you've done that and you feel like you've done a good attempt, uh, share it, send it to our Twitter, the, it should be on screen now, um, our Twitter handle, and we'd love to see your attempts there. Um, this is my attempt um, coming up next. Uh, taking inspiration from Darren Cheeseman again. Uh, this activity is going to focus on actually us taking the stick off the ball. Um, the clip will show in a moment of Mirko Prouser um, taking his stick off the ball um, to try and deceive and set up um, an elimination um, while still thinking about Indian dribbling. Um, so the activity is quite simple. We're going to find our two objects again. We're using shoes here. Um, as we move the ball from our right hand side to outside our right foot to our left, we're going to imagine we're going to tap, fake tap, and tap again. And when we move back, we're going to tap, tap, and go over the ball here. Okay? I would suggest just being careful if you're doing this in your house, that you're not banging the floorboards too hard, and parents will think you're coming through the floorboards. So, as we're moving it across, we tap, tap, and back. We're going to tap, tap, and back there. Back, tap, tap, back there. Okay? The whole purpose of this is getting used to being able to control um, some faking movements um, over the ball um, to try and set up a defender so then we can use our elimination skills which will come in some future videos. Activity number six and our final set of activities. Uh, activity six is a variation of slaloms. Um, so what we're using here is just a set of um, shoes. The first slalom um, will be to follow your ball with your feet, so starting outside here. And then I'm going to dribble around and slalom through. We can go back then as well. So we could do this a couple of times, starting the other way. So we could start on the left-hand side, and we could dribble then through and slalom through the shoes. Our second variation of the slalom is to go with our feet and our stick and ball path on separate sides. So the ball will start on one side of our line of shoes, and my body will start on the other. And as we cross over, we're going to swap sides. So we'll start on the outside here. I'm going to dribble. I'm going to swap my feet and my stick over. And I'm going to swap my feet and my stick over again. Go slowly with this to start. Try and get yourself comfortable. You can up the speed. Um, so hopefully, um, we start moving pretty quick, around like this, and we can go through here. For the slaloms, um, as you can see, um, a bit more equipment out. We're using some shin pads now. Uh, so what we'll do, um, the purpose is to keep our feet in between um, the two sets of objects, but the ball is going to go outside of them. So we can start outside the right here, we're going to move forwards, we're going to move the ball outside there, and then we're going to move the ball outside here. What you could do, um, as a bit of practice to get ourselves a bit more match realistic, is as we turn the stick over, we could imagine we're going to complete a pass down the line. So here, I'm going to move, I'm going to move the ball across and rather than just stop there, I'm going to imagine I might play the pass and then as I bring the ball back here, I'm going to open my hands up so I can imagine I'm going to play the pass here. Just getting ourselves used to some of the correct movement patterns. So that's the end of our first skills breakdown video. Uh, today, um, what we've covered is we've showed you the international um, example of what the Indian dribble is and, and some of the purpose around it. Uh, the second thing is we've given you an analysis tool um, or a way to work out how we're doing it correctly or if we're doing it correctly. Third, we've given you the cheat sheet, so the list of techniques um, of how to complete the skill correctly. And then four, 
um, a whole host of activities for you to try and complete to practice this. Um, what uh, we ask you from here is to like, comment, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and also share it around um, to some of your friends and family members um, and try and challenge yourselves, post it on social media, um, especially the Darren Cheeseman activity um, to see your best attempts. Thank you ever so much. See you again soon.